Hey guys, I just want to show you a quick video about a problem I think is going to be a big problem with these Megadines, uh, Megadine ESUs. I had a socket that wasn't going to activate with the pencil, but port number two, it would activate. So I pulled it apart and took a look. Even though this unit is only a couple months old, uh, we're always going to try and pull it apart and take a look. It's probably going to be a quick fix, and this time it was. So stay tuned. So this here is the Megadine ESU. You see, I've got it apart. It's actually not a very complex device. Down there, down on the inside, you can see a series of pin sockets. And it's a U-shaped socket that the front interface bar, which is right here, it's an IO bar. This guy sits in those sockets with pins. And there's a Phillips screw here and a Phillips screw here. Once you remove this cover, right here and right here, and the same on the other side, the cover will just pull forward, and those sockets down there were loose. You gotta wonder, how were those sockets loose? Because the Phillips screw on each side that holds that bar in place were tight. And the only way that normally those would get bent is from an impact from something that's plugged in but there's no pin damage. All the sockets look like they're good. So now we gotta wonder what went on with this guy and was that from the factory? I'm gonna put up some pictures and show you guys what it looked like before and what it looked like after adjustment. But now you can see now it's working. So all it was was loose sockets here on the rim and loose sockets here on uh, the monopolar A or monopolar one. Unusual as it is, uh, I'm really concerned about having the loose sockets on the rem because that means that you were not getting accurate patient return electrode resistance. So you could have got some pad peel and you never would have really known about it. Anyway, uh, that's what it looks like. Uh, also want to show you guys something I was not familiar with is that on the inside of this guy, is a metal pan with two cooling fans underneath the lid. You can see the lid right there. So that means that you're eventually probably gonna get some fan whir, which is the sound that they make when the fans get dirty because they're not getting cleaned. And these fans here are only a couple months old and I can already see a little bit of buildup on the blades. So if the fans do have the ability to get dirty, which all fans do, they have to get cleaned and that means that we got to pull five screws or six screws off the back of this guy open it up just to clean those fans and what a pain in the butt that's going to be so i'm not a, a fan of the megadine as it is you can see uh, only a couple couple months old take a look at the peel that i already got on the screen at all this it's got internal cooling fans which is already better than the force triad that i talked about in another video however those fans still got to get cleaned not too happy about that. And of course, the profile of this guy, it's fatter than a standard ESU. You can see it doesn't even really fit on this Olympus cart. And it's curved, so you can't stack anything on top of it, which makes it a real pain in the butt to try and put on a boom, because everybody likes stacking stuff on top of ESUs. But that's it, guys. It's readjusting the pins. You guys, if it happens on one unit, it's gonna happen to more. So the pins down there, are they were way too wide, and I'll show you some pictures of that. And all it is is simply crimping them back down so that they have tighter tolerance and testing it out. It's good to go.